Yo, 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 check out this chef, right? <laughs> right? That's so gay. That's really gay. Dude, look at those pants. Please don't say that. What? Don't say that something is gay when you mean that something is dumb or stupid. It's insulting. It's like if I thought this pepper shaker was stupid and I said, man, and this pepper shaker is so 16-year-old boy with a cheesy mustache. Just saying. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. The date was Valentine's Day 2013, and this was my first encounter with the word gay. Originally, I wanted to make this very cinematic and add in fluff, but I felt like I would ramble, and I realized how important this video actually is. This video is not for me. It's for the parents of gay children. It's for the brothers and sisters of gay siblings. And more importantly, it's for the black community. It's not your fault if you're ignorant on the subject, but before you spew hate and judgment, it's best if you educate yourself and maybe think about things a little differently than the surface level. I'm not here to tell you what to believe, but I hope this video makes you use your brain. That's all I ask. Being gay is not a choice, and while I have known that for my whole life, I never knew if there was a way that I could prove it. And while I'm not a doctor, I do have a bachelor's degree in psychology, and I intend to use it in some way. This video consists of just some of the things I have learned over the years during my studies. Because this video is so important to me, my BS tolerance in the comment section is extremely limited. So think twice before you comment something ignorant, especially if you haven't watched a full video. That being said, let's begin. Pregnancy is an extremely difficult process for the human body, and it is in fact the most strenuous job in human history, and I'm so glad that I'd never have to go through it. Without it, we literally cease to exist. A baby is a human being with a complex set of DNA from both of their parents, and over the course of 39 weeks, a baby undergoes a laborious transition that we have all had to go through. That is the transition from a single sperm and egg cell to a brand new being with a brain and limbs and a heartbeat. Only in recent years have scientists really tried to figure out how sexuality and gender develop. And this is probably more difficult than you might have originally perceived because gender is not only determined during pregnancy, but it's also influenced by societal norms. Are girls really genetically born with a liking to the color pink? Or did we tell girls that they could and should enjoy that color? And are boys really genetically born with a liking to playing with soldiers of war and cars? Or were those things we handed to them at the age of five? I think a mixture of both of those things could be true. Of all the human beings who have ever lived, most women will grow up to be androphilic, meaning attracted to males and masculinity, while a small percentage of boys will also grow up to be androphilic. On the other hand, most men will grow up to be gynophilic, meaning attracted to females and femininity, while a small percentage of girls will also grow up to be gynophilic. So the question then becomes, why is that? Why are there some women who are attracted to women and some men who are attracted to men? In the same way that black people were considered inferior because of skull shape, ignorance breeds prejudice. So now is the time for you to put your thinking cap on because we are now entering the science portion of this video and I promise to keep this as short and sweet as possible. Every single human being today started off as female first in the womb. In fact, every mammal alive today also starts off as female. Only with the introduction of the Y chromosome coming from the sperm of a male do things start to change. The Y chromosome carries something called an SRY gene. This gene alters the development of what was once a female baby and starts to work the magic to create a male baby instead. The development of ovaries is halted and the production of testes begins amongst many other things. I like to think of it as a large house with all the lights on. This is a female. Then the SRY gene comes in and turns off a third of those lights and replaces them with lamps. This house is now male. It takes the halting of female processes and the introduction of male processes to make a male baby. Hormones are extremely important for human survival, from conception to beyond. For example, more testosterone in a developing brain contributes to the outcome of the baby, and this is the main reason we see physical differences in the way male brains look and female brains look. There are two important periods during a child's development that determine sexuality and gender. Early on, physical sex differentiation happens in the womb, whether you're going to have a penis, vagina, etc. And later on, neural sex differences happen, also in the womb. And this determines who you end up being attracted to, as well as parts of your perceived gender. 
Typically, you develop as a male or female physically, and later your brain matches that. Sometimes, during the physical sex differentiation of the baby, other complications can occur, and although uncommon, we see people who are a mixture of both sexes. We call these people intersex, or having DSD. While most people will be born with either XX or XY chromosomes, some people will naturally be born with three Xs, XXY, XYY, or some other combination of chromosomes. In fact, one in 500 males are born with an extra X chromosome due to a genetic mutation, and these males often have longer arms, wider hips, and even breast tissues might develop, amongst other things. My point in saying that is that pregnancy is very complicated and not everything goes right all the time. Focusing on males at the moment, an example of an atypical development would be if the baby developed with male body parts, but the brain's development of sexuality stayed female. This is where we see homosexuality, and through a much more complicated process involving gender, transgenderism. You might be thinking based off of all that I've just said that homosexuality probably happens because female brains were introduced to more testosterone during development and male brains were not given enough testosterone during development, but that's not necessarily the case. There is plenty of evidence that this is the case for lesbian women, but it is not necessarily the case for gay men. Again, this process is extremely complex. As of now, there can only be theories based off the evidence we have currently. One of those theories is that it is not how much testosterone, but rather when it is introduced during the pregnancy. One of the most fascinating things I learned during my research was something called the fraternal birth order. In the 1930s, in populations and cultures all around the world, scientists started to notice a really peculiar pattern amongst males. The more older brothers you have, the more likely you are to be gay. This is only seen in males, which led scientists to believe it had something to do with antibodies being created by the mother that might alter the development of the male brain due to the amount of boys she had previously had. Although this is not the sole reason for homosexuality in men, it is a great predictor. And I want to make this clear. There is no evidence whatsoever in any way that parental interaction causes homosexuality. So boys with no dad will still grow up to be straight, as well as girls with no mom will also grow up to be straight, unless they were already going to be gay to begin with. Another interesting study of gay men in 1991 found that if you were a gay man and you also had an identical twin, there was a 52% chance that your twin brother was also gay. This number drops to 22% in fraternal twins, but it is still double than that of non-twin brothers. Subsequently, studies in Sweden show that lesbian women's brains, when introduced to sex hormones, reacted much more similarly to male brains than female brains, and the same study with gay men showed that their brains, when introduced to sex hormones, more closely aligned with straight women's brains. Many physical brain differences in homosexual people have been documented. Gay men on average have the largest corpus callosum, which is the part of the brain that connects the two hemispheres together, than any other population on Earth. While women do have larger ones than men, they are still not larger than gay men's. This portion of the brain has not been linked to sexual behavior, but it is still a very interesting observation. Across the board, gay men have brains that are similar in many ways to straight women, and gay women have brains that are similar in many ways to straight men. Even down to pheromones and sweat, men's brains respond to women's sweat and women's brains respond to men's sweat. And in the same way, gay women's brains respond to women's sweat and gay men's brains respond to men's sweat. That was the end of the science portion of this video. Um, I am looking like a hermit right now, so don't say nothing to me. But I really do appreciate you for getting to this point because I want to bring something home here. Um, if you have a gay son or daughter or trans, uncle, aunt, anybody in the LGBTQ community in your family or friends or anything like that, lead with love and compassion because you don't know why they are the way they are, but I'm sure you do know that you didn't wake up one day and just say, hmm, I think I want to be trans because this will be fun. Or I think I want to be gay because this will be so cool. I would love the ostracization for my community. I would love to deal with hate crimes. I would love all of those things. It would just be great to put on my bucket list. These things are not choices to make. Obviously, they're very difficult. It's very difficult to even come out and say that you are one of these things. Um, but the more that I have learned over the years about it, the more fascinated I am. And obviously, I knew it wasn't a choice, but it's really hard to try to prove that to somebody. 
you can, we, we, everyone could say, oh, our favorite color is orange, but we can't tell you why. But when you can pinpoint differences in brain structures, then it starts to become a little bit more serious. It's like, okay, well, what do you say to that? Um, I just don't think that there's much you can rebuttal with literal physical differences in the, in the womb and how brains develop between um, gay men, gay women, um, or anybody in the LGBTQ community. Um, and, and trans people and, and all of those people. So I, I think that, um, I hope this video made you think at least. I didn't, I don't want to, you know, change your beliefs or whatever, but I really want you to, to come to your own conclusion based off of what you heard in this video because I think a lot of people don't know about the brain and, and how it works. And, um, there's a couple things that I have left out, right, of, of this video. This is not everything. Um, but I got tired of editing it. I can't, I couldn't do it. I could not do it. Um, the point is just love everyone where they're at and just know that people would never choose to be in this position. I don't want to have to make this video, but I'm making it for the parents of people who have never had to think about having children who are gay or I'm making it for the people who are gay who are interested in why they are the way that they are. I had to do my own um, researching and discovering for myself. Um, so we, we are con constantly, oh my goodness, I can say it, constantly finding out more and more things um, every single year and I'm extremely lucky to be even be in a time where we know what we know now even though there's a lot we don't know um, and I hope before I die I find out a lot more things. Um, but there was once upon a time where we didn't know anything at all. So, um, I'm extremely lucky and privileged to be in this position and also privileged enough to have an audience, um, specifically a black audience to try to just bridge the gap, um, between us. And one more thing before I let you guys go, um, in 2024, Darius is not giving any more. Um, and I don't know, I try to make that work. But um, what I mean by that is that I, I'm going to speak what's on my mind. And if you disagree, that's totally fine. We, you just don't have to be here. Um, a lifestyle choice is whether or not you want to wear black every single day. A lifestyle choice might be whether or not you want to live in a high rise or a home. Being gay is hardwired into your brain. You either are or you are not. It is not a lifestyle. It is not a choice. It just is. Um, and if you have anything to say about that, that's your own prerogative. It's just, I can confidently say that that is not true. Um, so I'm going to leave you with that. And I hope that, um, we can continue to be besties, but if not, that's okay. Um, and maybe I'll see you guys some other time. Peace out.